The educator Dr. Maria Montessori once said, The child developing harmoniously and the adult improving himself at his side make a very exciting and attractive picture. Welcome to Montessori Education with me, Jesse McCarthy, where we talk raising children and educating students while bettering ourselves right alongside them. Hello, everyone. Happy to be with you today. Zero kisses. What in the heck is that all about? Well, I want to start by saying online, social media, just generally with Montessori, I'm seeing that people just put Montessori on anything. It's like, oh, you've got a wooden a wooden toy, Montessori, because it's wooden. Uh, you're, you're, you're using phonetics, Montessori. And it's like, well, maybe. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of Montessori materials are made out of wood, but some aren't. Montessori does use phonetics, but in a very specific way. So uh, what I thought I'd do today is do something a little bit fun. That's where the zero kisses come in. And also something very real, an actual lesson in what Montessori is like in the classroom. And in this case, it's going to be in math. I just want to give you guys some like even clearer insight that don't already know or for Montessori teachers out there, just kind of a refresher on this one particular material called the Montessori spindle box. So that's kind of the background. Still a little vague, but I think it will clear up uh, when we get there. So I want to start with a question that's related to this material, and it is how would you, so any of you out there as an adult, define zero? You know, we're talking about that unique number that comes before one. And how do you think young children learn about zero? So whether you're out there with a child in Waldorf or traditional school or, you know, at a normal home school, uh, how do children learn about zero? Well, I don't know exactly how everybody else is learning about it, but I do know in Montessori, there's a very specific and very meaningful way that children get introduced to the concept. And this is usually around three and a half to four years old, though it can be at different ages. And that is with this material that I'm mentioning called the spindle box. Uh, one of my favorite materials, actually. Uh, let me see if I can give you a brief description. I'm trying to make it visual for you. So you can imagine a material maybe about the size of a shoe box. There's no top on it though. And it's, it's wooden. It's a material wooden. It's not quite as tall as a, a shoe box, maybe half the size, but, and then there's little dividers. Uh, so it's a wooden box with dividers and it, you count from zero to nine. So it'd be zero. There'd be this little compartment. It's got a number zero written on it. And then there's a divider and then one divider, two divider, all the way to nine. Uh, usually it's just one wooden box like that, uh, but sometimes it's two separate boxes. One would be zero to four and the next one would be five to nine. But either way, it's called the spindle box. And what happens is children will put little spindles in each of those little divided areas that match the number. And what I'm actually going to do right now, because I want to make this as real as possible so you can get a sense of like, how is this material done and why is it important for math, like real academics? I'm just going to read to you exactly how I have it from my own training. This is how we're supposed to give this presentation. So I've described this little box to you. Now, this is how I, as a Montessori teacher from, say, three to six-year-olds with a CASA or primary classroom, this is how I might sit down with a child and teach or show this material to him or her. Okay, here we go. Presentation. Invite the child to the spindle box using that name. Introduce the material. You know, this is the spindle box. Invite the child to bring the material to the table and sit down. Review the numbers with the child by pointing to each number randomly, starting with one and asking, what number is this? So you do that with all the numbers except for zero. Now, at this point in the Montessori classroom, uh, the child will already know those numbers, so he'll be able to say, okay, one, two, so forth. It's important that they've gotten to that point. Take one spindle. Now, you can think of a spindle. It really could be anything, but Montessori eventually, I think, uh, one of the things she landed on was a spindle. And it's this kind of wooden uh, piece that you can hold in your hand. You can think of it almost like a chopstick for ease right now when we're uh, you know, just talking. Here we go. Take one spindle with your right hand and place it in the palm of your left hand with your palm closed and say one. 
So you take that, you know, uh, chopstick looking item, wooden item, and say one. Place the spindle in compartment one. Ask, what number is this? While pointing at compartment two. So again, each compartment in that wooden box has a number written on it. The child will answer two. Take a ribbon and place it in a horizontal line on the table. Now this could be a ribbon, this could be something else, but the idea is something that can hold these, uh, these spindles together as one. Take two spindles, one at a time, and place them in your left closed palm and count one, two. So you'd have this, this ribbon lying flat and you'd place them on the ribbon and tie them together. If it was a rubber band, I've seen people do that, they use a rubber band. I don't recommend a rubber band, it's a little bit challenging for the little fingers, but whatever case, whatever is easiest in your classroom, but something that ties these together. Place the spindles in the corresponding box. So you notice with the compartment one, there would just be one spindle, or you can think of like a chopstick there. Two, it's two spindles in a group now place there. Now think about that, because Montessori is very deliberate with these type of things. So you don't just do random stuff in Montessori. Two, that two in the child in that hand, because the child will eventually put it in his own palm or her palm, that's representing two. It's now those two spindles have become two. It's not two spindles. It's two the number in his hand or her hand. So just be thinking about the depth of this type of work in a classroom. So again, place the spindles in the corresponding box. Repeat the procedure with the rest of the numbers. So the child would go one, two, three, and he'd put three with the ribbon, tie it, put it in three. Um, the teacher would show this, and depending on the child in front of you, you might do this all the way to nine. You know, some teachers might just do this to three, and then the child goes on after there. You might say, would you like to try? Would you like to keep going? And then the child's going to you know, jump out and say, of course I want to, I want to. Um, I've rarely seen children like now nah, I'll pass on this. Like that is very, very rare. Any any case, the last point in my notes here for my training was invite the child to count them with you and tie them together after number four or five. If there are too many, you can help them tie them. Um, because sometimes the children's hands are too small to even hold that many spindles. Uh, that's why even chopsticks might actually help a child because they can hold them all, but we're using spindles. So at that point, what I want to do now, which is pretty cool, is I found a passage where Montessori talks about the next moment after this is done. The child's going to show you, oh, I'm done. There's no more of these spindles or something like that. For your knowledge, I think there's 45 of them total. But the child wouldn't know that immediately, but he would just say, oh, I'm done. That whole spindle box is now filled with those, you know, one spindle and number one, and then the wrapped up ones and the other things. But if you remember there's an extra number on that spindle box. So here I'm gonna have Maria Montessori pick up because she's got, a, she's got just such a lovely passage on this. So here we go. Quote, when the child has completed his task and thinks he has succeeded, he calls the teacher to verify it. We wait for a child to ask, pointing at the compartment for zero. And, and what should I put there? The child speaking. We then answer, nothing. A zero is nothing. But this is not enough. We must make a child feel that zero is nothing. For this, we use exercises that are highly amusing to the children. I place myself in their midst. As they are seated about me in their little chairs, I turn to one of them who has already performed a number exercise and say, Come, dear, come to me zero times. The child will almost always run up and then return to his place. But... My child, you have come to me once, and I told you to come zero times. But w what then should I have done? Nothing, for zero is nothing. But how do I do nothing? Don't do anything. You must sit still. You must not move. You must not come even once. Zero times means no times at all. We repeat the exercise. You, my dear. Throw me zero kisses with your fingers. The child trembles, smiles, and stays quiet. Did, did you understand? I repeat in an almost passionate tone. Send me zero kisses, zero kisses. I stop. I lower my voice as if I were angry at their laughter and address one of them severely, even threateningly. 
You, come here zero times. I tell you, come here zero times. Do you understand? I am speaking to you. Come here zero times. He does not move. The laughter becomes even more boisterous, aroused as it, as it is by my change of attitude, first of entreaty and then of threats. But then, I sadly sigh, why do you not come? Why do you not come? Then all shout in a loud voice, with their eyes gleaming and almost weeping from joy and laughter. Zero is nothing. Zero is nothing. Ah, is that so? Then all of you come here to me at one time. And they rush up to crowd about me. End of quote. Can you imagine learning zero this way? Like, this is how you gain the concept zero as a child? Obviously, Maria Montessori is having a blast doing this. The children are having a blast. So there's a certain joy in this learning process. But also just the spindle box itself, the fact that, like, she so concretized or makes real the idea that there is zero. Like there's nothing in that spindle box left. All the rest of those little compartments, you know, there's one with one, two, there's something. But zero literally means the absence of something. There's nothing. So you get such a real world sense of zero versus like, you know, some abstract math worksheet showing zero. There's nothing around like this is real. This is physical. You can feel it. I mean, to the extent that you can feel zero, this is how you feel it. And even Montessori talked about, you know, you want them to feel this zero. And that's why she's kind of playing these fun little games with them, along with the spindle box itself, which possibly could be considered a game. Something I want to note really quickly in my own notes on how to teach this to children. I just want to tell you that there's there's guidance on getting them to put it away afterwards. So that's another thing with Montessori, with order and structure, and just even elaborating on this, what we call the Montessori mindset or the Montessori mind, is that it's structure, it's order. Two comes after one, three comes after two. There's an order of things. And that includes, if you take something out, you put it away. So I thought I'd just read to you the end of the instructions, which are, explain that you will show him how to put away the materials. Take the spindles from box nine and place them on the table. Untie the ribbon and place the spindle in its box and the ribbon in its box. Invite the child to put away the rest of the spindles and repeat the exercise. So the idea here is we don't just go, oh, you've learned something and then walk away. It's helping the child to know, okay, what do we do when we're done? So this is just so consistent in a Montessori class and we take materials out, we place them on the table, then there's this really guided instruction on how to do it. Then we say, would you like to do this? The child does it. And then we aid the child in knowing, well, how do we put this material away? And I mentioned that because I know there's a lot of parents out there listening. It's the type of thing you want to do in the house. If you ever introduce something new to your child, we want to know, well, where does it go? When your child's done playing with it, where does it go? Because sometimes we don't even think about this. Oh, I give my child a new toy. Well, where does he put it when it's done? You know, he unwraps some present for his birthday. Well, where does this go when it's done, when I'm done using it? So it's just something that Montessori, Maria Montessori thought very carefully about. And then in good trainings, wherever they happen to be, whatever organization, they really are meticulous about this type of thing, which might seem minor, but not at all minor if we want to get children to be ordered in things they do in the classroom. Anyways, I just went off on a little tangent there about side issue of putting things away. That is the spindle box. That's the directions on the spindle box. Now, I'm using it not just because it's my favorite material and just this one particular thing was zero, but because just imagine if all of our knowledge was gained in some real world way like that. Like this is, that knowledge of zero is the child's. He learned that. I mean, this is, I mean, you can kind of compare it to say memorizing the word zero and nothing like as a definition in a traditional school, like sitting in your chair, just listening to that. That It's just such a different approach to learning. I mean, think about those of you who hate math or maybe feel insecure about your ability in it. Um, I definitely had this at one point as an adult. I I went back after I learned about Montessori and kind of retrained myself and it was exciting. Um, But imagine if you hate math, does this seem, this method of teaching math, 
uh, just in this one example, and Montessori math is very similar in different ways uh, with the enjoyment and the realness of math that you're getting in this one little example with Spindlebot. Do you think you would hate math if this is how it was presented to you as a child? Do you think you might be a little bit better, quote, better at math if you had learned it in this way and gotten joy out of it? I mean, it's such an exciting process in the Montessori classroom. So I just, I almost want to tell you as an adult, if you still hate math or you still feel like, oh, I'm no good at math, I'm horrible at math, I want you to go into a Montessori school, even if your child doesn't even go to a Montessori school, find a local Montessori school, ask to speak with a teacher, a Montessori teacher, and say, can you show me the spindle box? If, if that woman or that man, the rare man who's in a three to six classroom, uh, if either of them are a great Montessori teacher, they're going to say, oh my God, I can't wait to show you. Or they're going to say, well, I'm busy right now. I got a lot of kids, but let me get back to you, you know, because I know I remember myself as a, as a teacher and I worked with mainly older children, but man, and when parents came to me wanting to know what their children were learning, I was so pumped to share with them. So go rush into your nearest Montessori classroom or school uh, and learn about it yourself if you don't already know. Some of you out there, your Montessori teachers, your Montessori heads of school, you already know this stuff, but hopefully you know, you enjoy thinking about this process again. And ask about some other Montessori materials, actually. It doesn't have to just be the spindle box, obviously. And then jump into some other stuff. There's some geography work in there, some science work in there. Once you start, it's like, uh, what are those? Pringles. You know, once you, once you pop, you can't stop. At least that's how it's been for me. And you know, maybe coming full circle here to think about this learning. A lot of people say that Montessori is just play. Or you see online on social media, it, it just seems like you could have somebody who is just a normal person, jumps in and goes, oh, my child is doing Montessori. And they put this name Montessori and they're just, I don't know, they're playing games or something. It has nothing to do with Montessori. I think the way or the reason that Montessori has become this idea that it's just play is because a lot of times it feels like play to children. Like these feel like games. The spindle box feels like a game when a child is learning it. So I think that's why there's a kind of a misunderstanding or a a myth about Montessori being all about play and games because it might feel like that to children. I remember actually there's that former Montessori child. He's unfortunately he's dead now. He's the Nobel Prize winner, I think in literature. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, he said something related to this about his own childhood because he was a Montessori uh, child himself. He said, in Montessori school, quote, it was wonderful to be alive then. Studying was like playing, end of quote. So uh, again, I think children that went to Montessori school, a lot of them have this memory of like they just had joy. They might have been focused, but it was this joyful experience. So I think that's where some of that... uh, you kind of work as play comes from in Montessori. And I actually think that's the way school and learning should really be. I mean, this learning is a joy. Learning about math, learning about history, learning about geography, learning about different plants and their shapes and their names, it can be a joy. And I think when we think of school today, school, Besides, you know, in America with all sorts of tragedy right now with school shootings that comes to mind when we think of school. But generally, when we think of school outside of Montessori, we don't think of fun. We don't think of play. Or if you're a child, when you think of school, you think, oh, my favorite part of the day is when I get to run outside the doors and get out and play. Now, that's not the same with Montessori children. I mean, they love to run around. Who doesn't love to run around? But the learning is the core joy. So we need to flip the idea that learning and academics has to be boring and then doing all sorts of hand painting and running around the forest. That's real joy and that's play. That can be fun too, but they both can be joyous. Academics and running around free-spirited wherever you happen to be. Um, Okay, I feel like I'm going on a little bit of a rant, so my apologies. Uh, I just, I love this Zero Kisses I love the spindle box and there's so many more similar types of things going on in a Montessori school. And I just want you to try it out if you don't know about it. And if you already know it, I just want to share a little bit more uh, depth about what's going on in there. Okay. 
that's what I have for you guys today on the Zero Kisses, the Montessori Spindle Box. Now, before hopping off, I do want to say thank you, like real, real thanks again to those of you who subscribe to the show, uh, whatever podcast player you're on, who rate the show, who send me emails or comments on it. I love it. It means a lot to me. Uh, There was actually one a few days ago that was pretty cool to read. It's from a woman named Sierra Tan, and she said, quote, as a Montessori, Montessori certified teacher and the owner of a home-based Montessori preschool, I have enjoyed this podcast since the first time I heard it. I truly appreciate the conversations Jesse has had with all the guests as well as his own thoughts and reflections. Thank you so much, Jesse, for putting a great deal of time and effort to make this wonderful podcast, and I look forward to hearing more of it going forward. End of quote. That's me tapping my heart there. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, And I look forward to making more episodes for sure. Okay, that's really it. Um, Oh, and if you're not subscribed on YouTube already, I do suggest you hop on over there. I usually post the podcast episodes on YouTube, but every now and then there's also a video of a talk I might have given at a school or an organization. And sometimes, I think there might be one coming up soon, I create videos of my own there too, like What is Montessori, which was a big hit a while back. Anyways, check it out. YouTube, Montessori Education Channel. That is really it. Take care, everyone, and adios for now.